Hey everyone, Admiral Seabass here. Welcome to my war room in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's been a while since I made a video because I've been playtesting Global War 85 like crazy. And uh, I want to do a couple things here. Quick video. I wanted to give you guys a flyover of uh, the current playtest. We're getting ready to start turn 9 this afternoon. And um, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, lots of good feedback. Made some tweaks. Confirmed some things. Uh, found some things that we needed to tweak also. See here, this is Central Europe where NATO and uh, the Warsaw Pact are just grinding each other uh, every turn, which is exactly the way we want it to play. Um, but uh, anyway, wanted to give you a quick fire over the map and then talk about a couple other things kind of going on in our community as well. So this is what's happening in Central Europe. You can see here the Soviets have got Hamburg here in West Germany. The Warsaw Pact has held Munich from the very first turn that war broke out. But down here in Southern Europe, Warsaw Pact kind of attacked Yugoslavia too early, and that really opened up things for NATO down there. And so Warsaw Pact has really struggled to push NATO back uh, uh, on their southern front, but they've just kind of flipped the script uh, and are, are getting some progress now. Uh, over here in Western Europe, the Soviets have nuked a lot of the ports here where U.S. Sealift can come in, but this one port here uh, remains... Uh, the Soviets tried to nuke that one, but the NATO has anti-ballistic missile technology, and they were able to shoot that incoming missile down. So this port right here can still receive U.S. sea lift. And the U.S. is just moving stuff up into Frankfurt every turn and making Warsaw Pact have to come in there and hit it. So um, uh, we'll see how the Soviets and the Warsaw Pact can can get past that. See here, these uh, Doug made some aerial refueling tanker sculpts and a flight stand marker there. So that's the NATO aerial refueling tanker. Uh, over here, the U.S. has got uh, more sea lift ready to go, but the Soviets also nuked some of their ports. So they've only got this shipyard and that minor shipyard uh, where they can send sea lift out of. So it's been pretty precarious. Also, the U.S. has a task force here, and it took the, so the U.S. a long time to clear the Soviet subs out of here, which were also blocking U.S. sea lift. Um, and uh, the Soviets actually built up some more naval forces they've got a task force safe and sound up here they added to it last turn so uh yeah it's the the north atlantic has played out pretty nice uh the u.s did clear all the communists <clears throat> out of central and south america but they're persisting down here in um in southern africa where soviets have nigeria which is an oil territory which is costing the u.s and nato income and they've got all this stuff down here the U.S. is building up a marine force to come down, but you can see here, Soviets have anticipated that, and they've got a uh, sub here waiting for that. Uh, this task force, by the way, is up in the med, so it's not an issue down here. And uh, the Soviets will certainly build up down here <clears throat> before the U.S. arrives. The Middle East is hot. Like, um, this is really where war broke out, uh, because the Soviets invaded Iran... And then that caused the U.S. to come in and hit Iraq. Then the Soviets came back in and pushed the U.S. out of Iraq. But that caused Saudi Arabia and UAE to align to the U.S. So now the U.S. has built some more production capacity here to build more units. One of the challenges for the U.S. in the game is getting units into the theaters to fight the Soviets. So um, building production capacity like these production centers helps them with that. See here, then last turn, the uh, Soviets came up and took Syria. But that was really bloody. Um, they took it from NATO. They also have Lebanon. So the, Israel may align now. <clears throat> We've talked about an alignment condition for Israel that if the Soviets control Syria, Baghdad, and Tehran, that Israel would align to the U.S. So that may happen on turn nine. <clears throat> you see here, the U.S. also has Indonesia and has been building up production capacity there and been hitting uh, <clears throat> India with some theater missiles and airborne attacks. And the Soviets have really been struggling to get enough into India to push back. So U.S. may get into India here pretty soon. And then over here, look at look at China. They are just a beast right now. Because um, the Soviets decided they would not attack China early in the game. So the Soviets have built up all these massive ground forces. Um, they uh, converted Burma to their side in uh, as a diplomacy move during the build-up phase. <clears throat> They've got massive forces here getting ready to go into India if they want to attack the Soviets. 
They've got massive forces up here, um, which could take the Soviets on. But the Soviets have got a lot of stuff in here, too. Plus North Korea, which has, I think, five infantry, two mechs, and a main battle tank. Um, so uh, it's uh, pretty hot over here as well. And, of course, China did take Taiwan last turn, um, which gives them a lot of bonus income as well. So, yeah, that's uh, that's where things stand with this game. It's been a lot of fun, um, and uh, we're looking to finish this game sometime in the next couple of weeks so that we can start another playtest on March 26th. So, uh, I know Doug is hoping to get this game out this year, um, and uh, we're going to try to make that happen. Uh, of course, it doesn't just depend on this game, but, but other games as well. So, um, Doug's been great, by the way, and I have to give him a huge shout-out uh, in historical board gaming. Um, if you like to design games, and you're good at designing games, and uh, you've got some ideas about games, Doug is awesome to work with. Uh, I mean, just in designing this game, he's been very supportive, um, and uh, lots of good ideas as well. So, uh, thank you, Doug, uh, for everything you've done, uh, not just for this game, but for the community. And speaking of the community, a couple of things. One, if you're not op watching Operation Winter Solace, uh, please do. It is fascinating. I've never seen a Global War 36 game play out like that one's playing out. So that is uh, Hilltop Pillbox, Panzer King, and Fortress Jinx are playing that one on YouTube. Uh, please watch that. <clears throat> also, uh, the Plastic Commando has got a really great playthrough of Axis and Allies World War I with some of his house rules like poison gas and machine gun infantry. If you're not watching that playthrough, it is really good. Very well done. Um, and uh, he, he's covering everything. He's basically showing you everything he does every turn, which are the kind of playthroughs that I like, even though they're harder to do as a YouTuber. I love to see every move, every dice roll. So please go check out Plastic Commando and uh, give his Axis and Allies World War I 1914 playthrough a watch as well. I think you'll really enjoy it. All right, that was my update uh, for today. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching.